there we go on the pause what's going on guys we are fishing one of the most popular spots in the Dallas Metroplex it seems like based on how many fishermen we saw down at the water <laughs> on our way in holy smokes this place is packed you guys are in for a treat because the big bass are hitting over here uh, we've been told also the small bass are biting as well but we're gonna try and avoid them catch some bigs we've got a couple rods in here Devin and I are getting the gear out of the truck right now and we're gonna take you down to the water and see if we can't link up with a half decent sized fish tonight stick around stay tuned because we are going in now he said uh, he said white but I think black and blue is all the same it's just murky, so I think either one would work. It's not that bad. Did you put that swim jig that I had laid out away in a box or anything? Maybe I left it on accident. This might be it. How's it going? <laughs> how are you doing? I'm hey, Weston. This is my buddy Scott. Nice to meet you. you. What's up, man? How you Not doing? too much. How are you? you? Doing alright? Yeah, I was just hitting the current oh, a little man. bit, but. It's about as, uh, as I see it. Yeah. No, not really. I'm just throwing the swim jig without the blade, and it seems to be doing just fine. Get out of here. It's a big old crappie. That's a fat old crappie, huh? No way. Get out of here. <laughs> Y'all, Devin comes around the corner with what I feel like is a big old bass, and look at this thing right here. It's like a like... two pound crappie. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a huge treat. Oh my gosh. What a You're gonna need like an eight pounder to devour that thing. Oh, Hold like on, we gotta get this thing on the scale right now. <laughs> this might be bigger than my 1.94 we caught the other day. This might be my, uh, That's my like, crappie PB. That's PB right, <laughs> material. Yeah, what, so what were you doing? Uh, I'm using the homemade uh, chatterbait, of course. The homemade chatterbait. The homemade uh, <laughs> swim jig chatterbait. No way. And pulled out this uh, crappie. <laughs> All right. Holy moly. Yo! <laughs> we're looking at a Yo. two and a quarter pound crappie. That's funny. <laughs> Probably the biggest crappie we've ever caught on the channel, y'all. Two and a quarter. We're gonna get this thing back in the water and catch some more fish for you guys. Hopefully bass. Because it wasn't fight like you couldn't feel the head shakes or anything, so I, it didn't until I saw it. I still wasn't sure that I even had a fish. <laughs> this little turtle comes close enough. I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> I think it's a little snapping turtle. Okay, so Devin's on to her second species of the night. I'm gonna let her tell you about it. Check this thing out. <laughs> oh, he's, he's not messing around. He's not messing he's not around. Not messing around. <laughs> I saw him like going through the grass, mm -hmm. like next to my feet, and I'm like, if this guy comes close enough, I'm gonna grab him. <laughs> I didn't really know it was a snapping turtle until I got him out of the water. <laughs> 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 Don't you do it. <laughs> She's gonna let him go. We're still on the hunt for a bass. <laughs> I'm throwing the uh, bluegill swim bait. Have you hit at all lately or no? I guess that front one with almost like that gazebo. Oh God, just got smacked. There we go, on the pause. What do we got here? <laughs> just got smacked. Just talking about uh, fishing other ponds and then bam, out of nowhere, my first bass of the night. And uh, these trebles are everywhere. So I'm gonna get the flashlight. All right, y'all, first fish of the evening for me. Check this guy out, a little after sunset. What time is it? It is uh, 8.06. Pretty plump, this one, though. Let me get the scale. We're gonna see what this thing weighs. Hit on the Jackal Gantrail swim bait. I wanna say this is the uh, 1.5 ounce and the spawn gill color, if I'm not mistaken. It's kind of like a darker gill color, not like that uh, ghost gill that I commonly throw. Let's get this thing on the scale and then back in the water. I just dipped her, so. We haven't had this fish out of the water for too long. 
and we are gonna have her on our merry way and see if we can't get a couple more. Wow, you guys don't see much from me on the channel after dark, so this is a nice little treat. Something we don't normally do, man. Let's get this thing out and see what we're talking here. Settled on 390, you guys, so close to a four pounder. That will do for the first one of the evening. Let's get it back in the water. Oh, he's gonna do a hop. Yeah, <laughs> he did one of the hops. I saw that coming. All right, guys, let's try and get a couple more after dark. Pumped. Yeah. Jesse's almost. Ooh, let me see wait. this thing. Ooh. Not yeah. too bad, huh? Look at that thing. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh. Oh no. Why did it go off? <laughs> I don't know. All right, that might be the last one of the evening for us. You guys, we'll catch up with you at the truck. Okay, so this is not the truck. It is actually back at the house. And a few days later, guys, we're kind of in self-quarantine out here in Texas. The restaurants have closed, the gyms have closed, and we're gonna now take you into the tackle unboxing second portion of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the fishing side of it. We're now gonna show you some new things that we have purchased from Carl's Bait and Tackle. But first, let me give you a quick update on the family, show you what everyone is up to. Devin's out in the garage doing a home workout. If you haven't seen the home gym, let me step out here for just a second, and then we'll introduce y'all to some of the family members before we get to the baits. Come on. Okay, so she just wrapped up her workout. She's got Zeke out here, so here's one of the family members. Don't forget your phone. Come back out. And then inside we have you, Juno. How are you doing? And then here's Marshmallow. This is Max. How are you? Who else have we got? Here's, here's Milo. Otis is in his corner. Hanging out on his bed. And then in the office we have Jesse. We also have the king. And then over here uh, oh, I was gonna say she's hiding, but no, she's active. And then we also have the spotted python. But now allow us to unbox the goodies. And now it is time to see what we have in this month's order. Let's go ahead and just, uh, I'm just gonna break it out and do it a little different this month. So here is what we have. First off, uh, since I've kind of already opened these, <laughs> we've got a pair of these original snip, proven to last 1 million plus number one fishing line cutters. This is the boomerang tool. This thing is super sick. I don't think I have uh, unboxed one of these before in one of my Carl's unboxings, but you'll see it stays locked and closed. And then you can, uh, whoops, you can open it. And this thing has been just a monster. I keep this on my backpack, my tackle backpack. It also has this carabiner attachment. And what it really is, is a line cutter. Uh, you're constantly retying, switching baits, tying on different leaders, this, that, and the other. You need one of these tools. Uh, it's so much better than what we used to do, which was just use our set of pliers and it's kind of making a multi-purpose and it just gets nowhere near the power that this thing has. It just slices through braid, floral, mono, you name it. And uh, you can put it on your belt loop. You can put it on, like I have my tackle backpack. You can also, like I said, lock it up. That way it's not uh, open and you slice something by accident. This tool right here, whew, must have. I think it's 10 bucks or less on Carl's, at least if you're a club member like us. So go ahead and check that out next. Let's see what we've got. We have some uh, Game Changer Lures E-Eliminators. I've thrown these before and probably not as much on my channel as uh, videos I've done for the Mystery Tackle Box channel, but they work. You'll see right here, it's almost like uh, a picture of it swimming. And that is, I believe what these are intended for, that paddle tail. You can certainly Texas rig these and kind of drop them down and it will have that swirling tail on the way, oh, as it's falling and on the way down to the bottom and bass will strike. But also I've heard that they work fantastic as chatterbait trailers. I have yet to try them as one. And that is why I got some more natural colors this time around. 
I'm gonna toss this on some natural colored chatter baits, possibly a swim jig, and see how they fare. You guys will see my review in future videos. We have a grass hero, so I might pair it up on this because the color goes good with this Rotten Pumpkin Guggen Squad Grass Hero. This is a 3 8 size. I've been throwing these a lot lately. Uh, really enjoying the Grass Hero swim jigs with a lot of these uh, Texas ponds being filled with that grass that you wanna cut through. That's down there where the bass are hanging out. You wanna get in the thick stuff, or at least along those grass edges, and this just works through so nicely, maybe unlike certain chatter baits, uh, bladed jigs, unlike, you know, you can't be tossing crankbaits, um, you can go above the grass, but you're not going to be getting in it. There's just no opportunity for that with the treble hooks. Uh, this right here with the weed guard it has it is just fantastic for working through thick grass. And so the uh, Grass Hero Swim Jigs have been awesome. This is again that Rotten Pumpkin. And I think I even ordered two because I've been throwing them a lot. So I've got uh, also the green pumpkin, which this this should pair nicely, but at the same time, it might be a little too big of a profile to go on the back of this. This is a quarter ounce, even smaller weighted uh, swim jig here. So I may or may not pair it up with this here, but this is definitely going on some chatter baits. 100% I had ordered some Z-Mans recently, so we'll put them on the back of those. Next, we've got some Carl's Amazing Baits. Uh, these are like beaver style baits right here. Some of the first baits I ever Texas rigged when I started doing my fishing vlogs, and you can go back and, and uh, even verify, have been those beaver style baits. Uh, is it Reaction Innovations or whatever the company is? And you know, I think one of the popular colors I threw was like brown with like a yellow tip on the uh, tail there. And these things have been fantastic. This is almost more of a finesse size, so I will probably Texas rig these up, throw these as, uh, I think specifically the reason why I order these is because I wanted to throw them as trailers on the little juicy jig. Yeah, so just taking down a couple notches on these little beavers right here should be ideal for something like those little juicy finesse jigs as well as even some smaller finesse Texas rigging opportunities. So I got a couple of those. Now, another bubonic bugs crankbait. I have been loving these things. I don't throw them each and every day, but uh, they've got some cool color schemes and so I'm just constantly trying to diversify, try some new colors. This is the black and yellow, and I'm pretty sure I lost a big bass on this color here. In another video I did for the Mystery Tackle Box channel, I'm pretty sure I lost this one of about a five or six pounder at the yak. That was a heartbreaker. Whenever you're fishing rock, you can really feel that with like, let's say you're popping a jig or a Texas rig on the bottom, you start to feel some rock and you're feeling that moving bait bite. These square bills are what you wanna go for. These square bills dive down and that bill helps deflect off the rock and that noise and vibration gets the bass attention and they flock over. A lot of times what'll happen is as you're creeping it and you feel the bottom, that's when you get those bites. As you feel it bumping those rocks, you might think you're gonna get caught and sometimes you may get hung up, but let me tell you what, that's where the bites are secured. Next, we've got some saw craws and I might even can throw these as trailers on my Grass Hero jigs just to vary things up. You guys see me throw the Kraken Crawls left and right, and we're just gonna give something else a try. There should be some great kicking action with these. I've used these a few times, but uh, mainly Texas rigged, and so we're gonna try a few different applications with this color right here. And this is the Texas Crawl. So it's quite fitting since we're out here in DFW area, and it reminds me sort of of the uh, Alabama Craw color of the Guggenbait. So if you guys saw the Alabama Craw, you might look at this as another option. Also, we have some more drop shot weights. I have been running low and I needed to stock up, so I got some more quarter ounce. Uh, these are five packs from Carl's. And so you'll be seeing me rig up my drop shots with these right here. Excellent technique when the bite is tough and the bass are being just so finicky. You can catch small bass and even some big ones on those drop shots, so do not be afraid to throw those. Uh, I'm throwing them primarily when the visibility is better. I don't mess with them too much if it's stained, if it's, you know, I did the other day just because there was no other alternative, uh, but I really like the drop shots in the crystal clear water. That's where they really excel. I got some more line, and don't worry, I actually have some different sizes coming, but you know my all-star go-to favorite, just all around use for me has been 17 pound. And that is really with the uh, Texas Clarity. I have to tell you what, if you're fishing crystal clear water, or you're maybe up north, you do need to size it down a little bit, or a lot. You could go down to eight, 10, 12. When you're talking about crankbaits and a lot of these moving baits that have a depth rating, those depth ratings are oftentimes referred to with 12 pound fluorocarbon specifically uh, as monofilament actually floats, braid floats, fluorocarbon is gonna get you those uh, depths at 12 pound. But I need something a little bit more stout uh, because 
the structure that I'm fishing oftentimes, I want a heavier line. I don't want to be worrying about breaking off. And it has happened to me plenty of times when I go down to something like 12 or 10 and I'm not fishing just open water or crystal clear water quite frequently. So 17 pound is just my all around. You'll see me even using finesse lures sometimes with this line right here because it's on most of my reels. So 17 pound, I got to get a couple more spools. We have a lot of reels. And let me tell you what, if it's not this reel, it's that reel. They're always low on line. And so I had to stock up. Next and almost rounding out all that we have in this month's order is another Mike Buka's Baby Bull Shed in collaboration with Ketchco. And this one right here, is in the trout coloration. I don't know if that's the actual name, rainbow trout. And I got this specifically because they have been releasing rainbow trout and ponds in our areas. They've been stocking them. I think the last of the stockings was probably the end of February or very early March. And so I really wanted to try and take this to some of those local ponds and catch some bass that are targeting the rainbow trout that are released into these ponds. And I just haven't yet. So we're gonna have a chance to throw this little guy. I've got some more of those Carl's Amazing Baits beavers. These ones are a little bit larger size though. I believe this is called the varmint. And now these ones are probably a uh, three and a half inch or something. These ones right here are more like four, four and a half, I'd say inch. And these remind me of the blue baby color. If you're talking about like, let's say Guggen baits, you guys see me throw those a lot. And so I will throw these Texas rigged as well as maybe trailers on my larger jigs, maybe the juicy jigs, the gridirons, the things of that nature. Uh, you could have great success with these right here. And so I got some more of those varmints. Oh, last but not least, this is something I'm pretty excited about. I've been throwing a lot less of the Ned rig and a lot more of the drop shot. One of the reasons is because of the grass I talked about, how it's so heavy in a lot of our ponds here. And it probably is in many of the areas that you're in as well. So these right here are Ned hooks, but they are actually EWG style. So instead of sticking out of that Ned rig, which can be great for your hookup ratios, these are gonna offer you a weedless option for your, for your Ned rigs. And this one right here is a 3 16 ounce, and they're kind of that uh, green pumpkinish color. And so I'm gonna be tossing down a lot of uh, rattling Neds on these things right here and see if these things don't catch some bass when the bite is again finicky or I need to downsize and go just finesse. So what you can do with this guy is feed your Ned Rig option right on up and essentially Texas rig him and have a completely weedless Ned Rig option. And now yes, your hookup ratio, you might sacrifice uh, one out of 10, two out of 10. It's really tough to say. I haven't used them yet, but you're gonna see a great review on these things coming very soon as I'll throw out more Ned Rigs knowing I'm not gonna get caught in near as much grass with this option right here. I'm pretty pumped on all this stuff. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please drop it a thumbs up. Share it with your pals who need to know what's working this time of year and what we've got on order to secure some more of these catches. And uh, yeah, if you like those big swim bait videos, I'll tell you what, we have a lot of fun with them. I'm glad we got a hit on the Jackal Gantarell in this video. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.